We now return to former President Trump's legal problems in that Manhattan case being prosecuted by District Attorney Alvin Bragg. We're joined once again by our Robert Costa and joining us remotely, our CBS News legal analyst, Ricky Clayman, along with former New York City Police Commissioner, Bill Bratton, who also happens to be Ricky's husband, in full disclosure. <laughs> they are both in Naples, Florida, and we're so glad that they can join us together um, because I do want to start on the legal and security aspects of this case. Uh, Ricky, last night, the former president told reporters he thinks the case against him has been dropped. We've seen no evidence to back that up. What is reality about what to expect in, in the coming days from this grand jury? From all of the information that we have, the grand jury is set to meet, as usual, on Monday. The grand jury usually sits Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We do not know if they are done with their evidence yet, but when they finish, we assume that Alvin Bragg's office will come to them with a draft indictment, at which point he will put forward the charges that he intends to prosecute. The district attorney or his people are excused from the room. The grand jurors deliberate. It takes a vote of 12 out of 23 grand jurors to return an indictment. It could happen as early as this week. It could happen. Um, the Commissioner, the, the Manhattan District Attorney in the past few days has already received threats. Um, the former president, but besides the rhetoric uh, that he has um, issued, reposting images of himself with a baseball bat, um, he's vowed death and destruction. We also had this example of a white powder being sent to the office of the district attorney. Can you just give us a snapshot of the threat level right now? Well, as you might expect, the uh, threats that uh, are being made by the former president, which are unfortunate, uh, law enforcement officials will be responding accordingly in the sense of ramping up security, certainly around the district attorney and others affiliated with this case. The district attorney uh, is normally provided New York City police protection. That protection has, in fact, been expanded. There is significant protection around that courthouse, in that courthouse, if, in fact, that is the courthouse that is going to be used for an arraignment if there is an indictment. Uh, law enforcement is monitoring social media very closely and will respond, uh, as they always will, with uh, speed and uh, intensity to any threats made against any of the individuals in this case. If there is an indictment, uh, Commissioner, how can you walk us through what an arrest of a former president looks like? I mean, this seems unprecedented. Will anyone even be handcuffing him, for example? Uh, if they're handcuffs, uh, the president's going to have to bring them himself. I don't imagine that the uh, court officials uh, will require handcuffs be placed on the uh, former president. That's a policy decision. Uh, it's thought that the president would like to have that photo, but I don't think the uh, officials in New York are going to provide that opportunity. If there is an indictment or indictments, the president will be required to surrender someplace in Manhattan at one of the courthouses where he would be uh, basically uh, fingerprinted electronically, photographed, and uh, basically given a booking number, if you will, at which time he would then be taken before a judge to be arraigned on the charges contained in the indictment. Uh, the way it works is the, uh, if you will, the booking would be supervised by uh, people from Alvin Bragg's office. New York police are there for security purposes. Secret Service would be there every step of the way, as they are required to do uh, to protect the president. So uh, the process is being negotiated as to where and how it will be done. It's a, uh, an exceptional process, as you might expect, for this particular case, for this particular individual. Exceptional is, is certainly the word. Um, Ricky, you know, past Manhattan district attorneys have chosen not to move forward with this case. There have been questions about uh, the legal theory that part of it, at least, is based on. Um, if the indictment happens, do we know what the charges would be and what is the likelihood it goes to trial? We do not yet know what the charges will be, but we certainly have a very good idea of what some of them will be. And we have that idea not only because of Michael Cohen speaking uh, outside to the press uh, after he has testified, 
But we also know that uh, the district attorney's office has spoken with Stormy Daniels. And we also know that from Joe Tacopina, the president, former president's lawyer, as what they expect, as I say, some of the charges to be, because there may be additional charges. And what the charge that is expected has to do with the hush money payment that was made by Michael Cohen, he says, at the behest of Mr. Trump, in order to buy her silence, in order to have it not come out on the eve of the 2016 uh, election. The difficulties with this case, and no one would say this case is easy, is that you take misdemeanor charges for falsifying business records because the payments back to Michael Cohen are written off as legal fees against a retainer. Mm -hmm. You take those as falsifying business records, you couple them with a federal election violation in order to up the misdemeanor to a felony. That's a unique theory. It is novel. It has not been tested before. But Alvin Bragg certainly feels that it will pass muster under the law. Ultimately, will the case go to trial? I believe so, if there is an indictment. Will the case yeah. be won? Well, a jury in Manhattan may want to convict Donald Trump on the evidence presented. The question may be for a judge as to whether or not the facts constitute a crime under the laws of New York. Keep in yeah. mind one other thing, Margaret. This may not be the only charge. There may be tax evasion charges. There may be other mm -hmm. kinds of charges that have been looked at by Mr. Bragg's predecessor, which had to do with inflation yeah. and deflation of property values that are currently being looked at in a civil case by the New York Attorney General. So we don't ultimately know what the final charges will be if there is an indictment. If. Um, Commissioner Bratton, the the district attorney, Alvin Bragg, is a Democrat. Mr. Trump has, has really taken aim at that fact and his record on crime. What should people at home know about Bragg? Is he an effective district attorney? Bragg has been controversial since his election relative to the issues of crime in New York City, particularly in Manhattan, his jurisdiction. Crime has gone up uh, recently. Uh, shootings and murders are down. But Overall, crime uh, is continuing to go up. So uh, his effectiveness, his uh, progressive policies have been uh, very much uh, uh, under debate in terms of uh, people in New York City. I'm somebody who has criticized very frequently uh, his actions or inactions relative to that crime yeah. situation. Uh, but we need to take that and separate it from this current situation, this current case. They are two separate issues entirely. All right, uh, Commissioner and Ricky, thank you for your analysis. I want to ask Bob Costa, who's here in studio with me, about the reporting you have gathered on this case. Um, is it all about Michael Cohen? It is not all about Michael Cohen. After being outside the Manhattan Criminal Court all week, it's clear, based on our conversations with sources, that the district attorney has documents in his possession that would be central to any case he eventually decides to mount, should it move in that direction, that it's not just about Michael Cohen's testimony. So often we hear about this case, mm -hmm. and we hear Michael Cohen's testimony would be the keystone for any sort of prosecution. It would certainly be critical, but not the only component. Do you, we have any details about what might be in those records? To build on Ricky's point, we are hearing there are business records, emails, financial records that the district attorney has compiled, that this is not just about bringing in Michael Cohen and Bob Costello, though we do wonder at this point, who else is going to come in this week, potentially? We spoke to Bob Costello, the final witness, potentially, last night, and he told CBS News he does not expect to be called this week. All right. Bob Costa, we'll continue to follow this story, and we'll be right back.